Hi guys and welcome to Economy Week. Our first review will be Emirates since that was the first flights I took from Zurich to Dubai to Delhi and you can see the map here um, of all my flights. Then I took a little detour through India and returned from Mumbai to Doha to Beirut and then I flew from Beirut to Abu Dhabi to um, Muscat on Etihad. Uh, the first review will be Emirates. Um, I'm gonna let the video roll. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to check out the entire Economy Week and of course um, for future Economy Week series and for my regular reviews, um, tips and tricks and more. So for my flights on Emirates, I'll be reviewing their A380 and 777-300ER. The reason I chose different aircraft types on different airlines is because I want to measure what the average experience is like for a passenger on each airline. For example, if you're flying from the US to the Middle East, the odds of you being on an Emirates A380 or a Qatar A380 are very different since Qatar doesn't even fly their A380 to North America. Hence, I chose the aircraft types at each individual airline that is most common and that you are most likely to experience to make the overall comparison more fair. Hello guys and welcome to Zurich Airport where I'm getting ready to board uh, my first Emirates economy flight uh, on their A380 which you can see an engine of over there uh, from Zurich to Dubai and I'm super excited to try their economy product on a flight this long and of course the real deal about this is that I'm going to be comparing Emirates, Etihad and Qatar's long haul economy class and see which one is the best, which one should you go with. Uh, and we're just starting out, I have a long um, time of travel before me, five days. So now I'm gonna set out on Emirates and make sure you keep on watching for this review and of course uh, at the end of all these reviews for the epic comparison so we can finally get to the bottom of which Middle Eastern carrier of the big three is the best. Since the A380 can carry so many passengers, people started lining up for boarding already two hours before departure. I got to the gate 40 minutes before boarding and the line was already quite long. So the Emirates A380 is laid out in a 343 configuration. If you can, try to get a seat in the forward cabin by the stairs. Not only is this the quietest part of the cabin since you're far away from the engines, galleys and toilets, but you also have an incredible feeling of privacy since there's not as many people around you. The seat looks and feels quite wide and the legroom is good, higher than average on international airline standards. The seat pocket in front of you has two pockets. The first thing you notice when boarding Emirates is how huge the entertainment screens are. They really stick out and they're very impressive. Waiting at my seat as I boarded were some quite nice quality headphones, a thick blanket, better than what some airlines give you in business class, and a pillow. Underneath the entertainment screens are power ports, USB chargers, and the touchscreen remote. Now what's really a shame is that the window seat actually doesn't have a power port. As you can see, the remote can be extended like this. The tray table is super clever, uh, and it can be folded into several different sizes and is adjustable back and forth. There is also the little drink cup holder on it, which is always great. Emirates' ICE entertainment system, which is known to be the best in the world, certainly did not disappoint. They had entire seasons of different shows, which I love to binge watch when I'm on board. One drawback is that all the shows, including short TV programs, had 2 minutes and 30 seconds of ads before the program started, which got really tedious after watching them 3-4 times. 
Something that really impressed me during boarding though was that the flight attendants were actually hanging up people's coats and helping them put their bags in the overhead lockers, something I've never seen before in economy. So as you heard, the A380 is an incredibly quiet aircraft. There's really no other airplane in the world that competes with it on noise level. The aircraft is fitted with external cameras in several positions so you can look outside from whatever seat you're in. So almost Emirates' entire fleet is fitted with Wi-Fi. The unfortunate thing is that they recently raised prices quite significantly, though I still think it's reasonably priced. The speed was okay for airplanes, but overall not too impressive. One thing that is also very cool about Emirates is how they incorporate their themes everywhere. They put their touches of faux wood in the lavatories, on the windows and in other places around the cabin. The meal service started with mango juice, water and pretzels. What's really cool about Emirates is that they have loads of different types of juices on board. It's worth mentioning that I ordered vegetarian meals for all my flights. This is actually the best way in my opinion to measure how an airline performs in its meal services. It's only logical that an airline that took its catering seriously would put a lot of effort into making specially crafted, delicious tasting meals for their passengers with dietary requirements. And I must say Emirates did a fantastic job. The catering was great, although the portion was a little small, I understand it's quite a short flight. We also got two more servings of beverages and they had metal cutlery, which is super impressive. This is the meal on my second flight from Dubai to Delhi, which was a breakfast served around 7 a.m. Delhi time, an hour and a half prior to arrival. This was also a lot better than it looked, and I really enjoyed my meals with Emirates. Another unique and brilliant feature on Emirates is their stickers that let you inform the crew of what you wish to be woken up for. You just stick one on your seat, and honestly, I wish much more airlines used these. Of course, their A380 also has beautiful mood lighting. Overall, the crews were decent on my flights. They weren't too impressive and I definitely had better crews in economy, but they did the job and they tended to greet you with a smile. There was one hot towel service on this flight which I appreciated, though I know Emirates have recently cost cut some of the towel services they used to have before. The recline on the seats was really impressive as you can see here. It was one of the best I've experienced in economy, almost on par with some premium economy products, which was really great. Another unfortunate thing was that Emirates started collecting things 45 minutes before landing. This includes headphones, blankets, pillows, everything really, which makes for a lot of time of just sitting there and not doing anything. We even had to store our trade tables 30 minutes before landing, even though we'd paid for Wi-Fi for the duration of the flight, and this meant we couldn't use it anymore. Итак, 
Ma tato ka infidu ka ei haavad, aga mida vaad soodile ta ei rai, mille kõist nende maalist ei tea, mida sa maad, kõik seda maad. If you are staying in Dubai... Given that Emirates is now the world's biggest airline by international passenger numbers, there's something about arriving in an E3 d which really doesn't feel like a big deal. I'm Swedish and I love IKEA, so don't take this in the wrong way, but I kind of got the feeling that Emirates was the IKEA of airlines. They provide super nice and good quality stuff for relatively cheap prices, at least in economy, but it's all in bulk, nothing is unique, and it just felt like I was one in the masses walking through Dubai airport, which is capable of handling tens of thousands of passengers an hour. It's like a huge system that you're just a tiny speck in. And personally, I prefer slightly smaller airlines and hubs just because the vastness of a terminal like at Dubai can become a little too much when you're traveling in the middle of the night. Allegedly, Dubai airport has free showers, though unfortunately I couldn't find them. There's also a very limited number of places where you can sleep or rest in the airport. They have a small company offering a few pods that are often fully booked far in advance, so it's really impossible to find anywhere to rest at an airport that relies mostly on overnight or midnight connections, which just doesn't make sense to me. At least one thing I did like about the airport is how seemingly casual the environment was. There were some great local restaurants with amazing and reasonably priced food. Down. One more to go. Delhi, here I come. So Emirates' 777-300 was a completely different matter from their A380. While the A380 is spacious and comfortable, Emirates have a tight 343 configuration on the 777, which makes it extremely tight. As you can see, the seats are very narrow, and the leg room also felt a lot worse than on the A380. Since this was an overnight flight, I was really disappointed I ended up being on the 777 since I could hardly sleep, it felt so tight and squeezed in. However, the 777 did have the benefit of having power ports at the window seats as well, and the recline was quite good. Other than that, the seat features, entertainment system, and everything else was pretty much the same as the A380. Of course, the cabin did look a little more dated overall. Emirates are one of the few airlines in the world to have stars on their cabin ceilings, which is just such a stunning addition to the cabin. Overall, I think you can tell that my flights on Emirates were quite different depending on what aircraft type I was on. If you're gonna fly Emirates, make sure you're on their A380, because it really was like night and day when it came to the seat. Although both have the same great entertainment, Wi-Fi, quite good recline, service, and meals, the difference in the seat and the cabin feel really is noticeable. But overall, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend Emirates, especially if you can fly their A380. I hope you found this video useful if you're looking into flying Emirates or you want to know what your experience will be like. Of course, we still want to know which is better. 
Qatar Emirates or Etihad. So we're going to be comparing these flights to two more Middle Eastern carriers. Make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for those over the coming week. Thanks so much for watching guys and until I see you all next time, fly safe.